Okay, let's see if we can actually work this problem. Well, look, uh, from the last video, we know that V1 is equal to 20.2, and that was at an angle of minus 83.65. Okay, now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna calculate the reactive power in the capacitor here, reactive power in the inductor, and of course, we're going to look at the, uh, the real power uh, as far as the resistor is concerned, the real power dissipation here. All right, so what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to find I1 and we're going to find I2. So that's the key to this. So we'll find I1 and we'll find I2. All right, now back to our circuit principles. We can say that the current I1 is equal to what? Well, let's have a look at this. Um, are we not really looking here at um, basically current division? Yes. So we know we've got, what, 50 milliamps. Remember, that's a current source. We've got 50 milliamps coming in here, which is going to divide between this impedance and this impedance over here. So we're looking at current division. So if that is the case, and we want to calculate the current I1, what do we do here? Well, we take the opposite impedance, which is what? Let's write that down. That's 500 plus the J 1.25K. I'll put a bracket around that. Okay. Divided by what? Really, the sum of this and this. And so what is that? Well, that again is going to be the 500 plus the J 1.25K, all right, so that's this, and then plus this impedance here, which is the minus J 318, okay? And all of that then is multiplied by what? The 50 milliamps uh, at an angle of zero. All right, so what do we have to do next? Well, we have to basically get this into what? A polar form, we have to get this guy over here into a polar form. Now that's what I asked you to do, so we'll just take that step. So I1 is then equal to, really this in polar form is 1352 at an angle of 68.29. That is divided by looking at this guy now in polar form. So we've got to basically deal with the imaginary bits here, haven't we? So it's 1.25K minus the 318. Okay, and then of course we've got our 500 being the real part. So if we convert that to polar, we've got 1063. And that is what? That is at an angle of 61.94. And of course that is multiplied by my 50 milliamps. All right. Um, so now what we need to do is just really evaluate this. And so if we take this really to one more step, we can say that current I1 is equal to 63.59 milliamps, and my angle is, and again, that angle comes up to the top, so that angle is 6.35 degrees, and so that's my I1 current. I2 then, similar approach, current division, we can say that I2 is going to be equal to what? Well, we take the opposite over here, which is what? Well, that is simply going to be, and I'll write this directly in a polar notation, so that's really what? 318 angle minus 90 divided by what? Basically, this added to this. Well, look, we've already really done that, so we'll say that's 1063 at an angle of 61. 0.94, and that is, of course, multiplied by my 50 milliamps at an angle of zero. So if we work this out, we can say then I2 is going to be equal to 14.96 milliamps. And of course, my angle over here, that is really taking this angle up to the top. That angle is a minus 151 point nine one degrees. All right, so let's just write that down. We now know basically I1 
that is equal to the 63.59 milliamps, and that's at my angle of 6.35 degrees. I know my I2, and that is equal to what we just calculated, 14.96 milliamps, and my angle here was a minus 151.91. Uh, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to find now the reactive power in the capacitor. So we'll write that down as QC is going to be equal to. What we're going to do is we're going to take the magnitude of the current I1 and we're going to square it and we're going to multiply that by the magnitude of the impedance of that capacitor ZC. So what is that equal to? Well the magnitude of my current I1 is what? It's that 63.59 milliamps, okay? And that is multiplied by the magnitude of my impedance over here, which of course is really my 318. Okay? And so if I work this out, QC then is equal to 1.29 volt amps reactive. Okay. We can do a similar story now with QL, and we can say, well, QL is really equal to what? It's really equal to the I2 squared, and that's going to be multiplied by the magnitude of the impedance of that inductor, ZL. So let's do that. Our magnitude of the current is what? It's 14.96 milliamps. Um, Oh, by the way, what did I forget up here? Yes, I've got to square that guy, didn't I? So that guy needs to be squared, doesn't it? All right, so it's 14.96 milliamps here, squared, and that's multiplied by the impedance of the inductor or the magnitude of that impedance, which is 1.256K, all right? So it's an I squared, uh, R, I squared impedance calculation, isn't it, okay? So if we work this out, QL then is going to be equal to, and that comes out to be 0 0.28, and this is volt amps reactive, okay? So our true power then is what? It's gonna be this I2 squared times that 500 I squared R effect, okay? So we can say then that the true power or real power is equal to that's going to be my I2 squared, magnitude of I2 squared, multiplied by 500. So therefore we've got the real power being equal to, that's 14.96 uh, milliamps. <clears throat> We're gonna square that guy. And multiplying that by 500, this gives us a real power, real power dissipation of 0. 1119 watts. All right, now let's see if we can construct um, our power triangle. Okay, so what have we got here? Well, um, in our horizontal direction, we have our true power or real power, which is what? That's a 0 0.1119. Okay, um, our reactive power as far as the capacitor is concerned is going to be what? This is actually the 1.29 VARs. Reactive power as far as the inductor is concerned, in the opposite direction here, that is a 0 0.28. All right, so from this, we can say that we get a power triangle looking like this, where that's a 0 0.1119, and we've got our net reactive power being 1.01, .01. and then of course over here would be what? The apparent power, okay? That's our apparent power sitting over here, which we can call S. Okay, let's go ahead and calculate this angle phi, and we can say, look, tan of phi is what? The opposite over the adjacent, so tan 
phi is equal to this 1.01 .01 divided by 0 0.1119. So therefore the angle phi is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of 1.01 .01 divided by 0 0.1119. If we work that out, that actually comes out to be 83.67. All right, a couple of things to note here. Well, angles measured kind of in this direction over here, we do basically call them negative, so I should put a minus sign in front of that. And reactants um, or complex uh, power measured in, or reactive power measured in this direction, we also put a minus sign there as well. Okay, let's compare this to what we did in the previous video. In the previous video, we had the real power, as being equal to 0 0.1118 watts. Well, how does that compare? Well, rounding, yep, yeah, same thing. And then our reactive power, Q, was equal to a minus 1.005 volt amps reactive. Well, how does that compare? Well, look, it's very close, isn't it? Again, a rounding issue. And then the angle, phi, was equal to a minus 83. 0.65. And again, look at the comparison. Just a rounding difference. All right. See you next time.